beam splitter and signal recycling mirrors. There will be another presentation after mine from Enzo, and he's going to actually talk about the performance. I uh, will focus mainly in the mechanics. And after Enzo, Okutumi-san, he's going to talk to us about the, uh, about the vibration isolation, which is used in the cryogenic payload. Uh, well, the outline is very simple. I will tell you what Kagura is, roughly, which is a cryogenic payload and underground and location. And I'll show you the different types of suspensions. Then I will give a description of the mechanics of the uh, Type B suspension, which to a certain extent is relatively similar to uh, the super attenuator. Then, well, we also have our own uh, prediction model uh, software. And I will just introduce what's the status of uh, the control noise model within the interferometer band. Future work and then conclusions. Uh, OK, so acknowledgments. This is just the current members of, 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 of the team. Uh, so some references, these are mainly for the students if they are interested. And then, well, as you have heard, Kagura is an underground gravitational wave detector, which is right now in the stage of commissioning, which is basically underground. So the central, we usually say that the central room is, is about 200 meters underground. And we actually enter the tunnel just horizontally because it's deep inside the mountain. Uh, and I think we have seen this plot several times today, and I think depending on the frequency between the Tama and Kagura sites, we have about uh, 10 and 100 times the reduction in the, in the, uh, in the uh, ground motion. So, and of course, Kagura is a cryogenic de detector. Uh, Yamamoto-san has already told us that, uh, you know, they are made of sapphire, they are cooled down to 20 Kelvin, and the mass of the whole payload is 200 grams. And of course, this is not like a tropical place like Natal. Uh, so this is a drawing of the cryogenic payload. I will not be talking to you about this. I just want you to know how it looks like. Uh, this is the sapphire mirror. This is the cryogenic payload. And everything is, 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 is black. Uh, sorry? That the whole payload. I think that the test mass, I think that's about 22 kilograms. The whole payload is about 200 kilograms. Uh, these are just some pictures of the uh, cryogenic payload while it, it was being assembled. And this is a, a, a side view of, of, of that system. Uh, well, the, time of the type of suspensions that we have in the main interferometer, we have the type A suspensions, which are the ones for the test masses. And this one is like 13.5 meters already. And Okutumi-san is going to talk to us about that. And then we have uh, a smaller type, which we call type B, which are for the beam splitter and the signal recycling mirrors. And we even have a smaller type for the signal recycling mirrors. Uh, so this is just a closer view of, of, of the suspensions. This is uh, the, the cryogenic payload. Uh, we have some uh, filters, very similar, well, relatively similar to the one that that they have in, uh, in, in Virgo. I, I will explain that in more detail. We have the, the Type B system, and the Type B and the Type BP, all of them are room temperature. There is no cryogenic part. And then even this, this part is at room temperature. The, the only cryogenic part is the payload for the test masses. So here I'm going to tell you about the requirements. Basically, uh, well, the basic re requirement is that within the observation band of the interferometer, which is at uh, above 10 hertz, we have, for instance, for the signal recycling mirror, we have to uh, achieve uh, 2.5 meters per root hertz here. And uh, at low frequencies, we also have uh, requirements. Basically, uh, we, was we, we need to achieve the local acquisition of, of the cavities. And, and for that, we have to have uh, 0.5 uh, microns per second. Uh, and also, if we want to have a, uh, a stable operation of the interferometer, uh, we also have to control the uh, pitch and yaw dis displacement, and that one has to have that one has to be one micrometer RMS. Uh, and if for some reason we 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 lose the lock of the interferometer, for instance, due to an earthquake, we would like to recover the alignments as soon as possible. So 
we have said that the uh, the vamping time of the of the uh, of the modes that that, that 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 would be excited has to be less than 60 seconds. So Enso will talk about the performance at, at low frequencies. So uh, Ettore has already introduced this. Basically, we have some uh, mass attached to a spring. We can achieve some vibration is isolation above the uh, resonant frequency, and we can calculate very easily the, 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 the transfer function. And of course, the, uh, the challenge of passive vibration isolation is to have very low resonant frequencies, and at the same time, what we want is to carry some very heavy loads. For instance, the payload, the carotenic payload is, is 200 kilograms. And let's imagine we actually want to carry a very heavy load with a very soft spring. That is something very difficult to do or impossible. So what we want to do is to be able to, to carry very heavy loads with a very soft system. And that's the reason why we, we use uh, anti-springs. But we, in Kagura, we also use active vibration isolation uh, because we do need to damp the modes, uh, the, re the resonant modes of, of, of the system in order to achieve the lock, for, for, for instance. And for that, we use active vibration isolations. We have uh, sensors like for geophones for velocity. We have some shadow sensors, which we call them OSEMs, that we got them, you know, the idea comes from, from LIGO. And we have some LBDTs. And basically what we do is use these displacement sensors and then uh, apply feedback with coil magnet actuators and, and, and we damp those uh, resonances. Uh, and besides the transfer functions of the, of the ground vibrations, into the interesting degrees of freedom of the interferometer, we also take other type of transfer functions, which basically go from our, uh, from our actuators into our sensors. And we use that uh, to assess the health of the system. For instance, and otherwise freely hanging component are touching with each other. So if, if, if that happens, we just have to go there and, and, and fix something. Uh, we can also diagnose problems like disconnected cable or, or, or connected in, in, in a wrong way. And uh, well, o of course, also errors in, in the software. And we also use these transfer functions to design control systems offline. And, and Enzo will be talking about that. Uh, so I will begin now the description of the Type B system. Just to remind you, this is a room temperature system. And this Type B system is used for the beam splitter and the signal re recycling mirror. And this is... Uh, this is Mark Barton taking, putting the, the suspension in inside the tank. And this is one of the SR mirrors inside the tank already. So the overview of the suspension, we basically have a pre-isolator. And the pre-isolator comprises an inverted pendulum. And we also have a, well, this is a top gas filter. So I think someone was talking about uh, some filters that uh, were using gas, but this is not the type, the same type of gas. This is an acronym for geometric anti-spring filter. So we have here uh, the top gas filter, the inverted pendulum. Then we have another geometric anti-spring filter here, and and we have basically three stages of, of geometric anti-spring filter. And then we have uh, the, the the payload, and I will explain this. This is basically the marionette. And here we, we have the optic with its recoil mass. And we have sensors and actuators. And uh, this is just an, uh, a suspended optical table. And we also have an optical lever, which is uh, on, on the ground. And let's not forget, we also have a, a magnetic damper that uses eddy currents. Uh, well, the basic elements of the uh, pre-isolator, well, uh, Ettore has already talked about us about this, uh, and we have three inverted pendulum legs. We have uh, three geophones. These are the, uh, the margin steel blades of, of, of the gas filter. Uh, I thought, okay. So we also have coil magnet actuators, which are seen here. Uh, and we have the geometric anti-spring filter for vertical isolation. And, uh, okay, I think I will go back to that later. So first, I think this is just to remind you how the we can actually achieve uh, carrying a, a very heavy load with the inverted pendulum. Basically, we, we have here a, a flexure. This, this flexure is, is, is very stiff because we, we want to, to put a, heavy, a very heavy load there. But then the heavier the load we put here, the, the larger is going to be the, the force, the, the force of, of gravity taking this, uh, 
this inverted pendulum out of equilibrium so that the system will, will become softer. Uh, and this is just a cross section of the inverted pendulum. In this case, we have the, uh, this is the flexure. They are roughly about 1.6 millimeters thick. Uh, and this is the base, and this base is actually supported on, on, on the ground. And here we have the top filter, and uh, there is here a suspension rod. Suspension rod. And this uh, basically carries a load of 250 kilograms worth. Uh, well, we also have uh, sensors. We have the LDT units, which are here. We have something which we call fishing rods. These are horizontal fishing rods, and they actually look very different to the ones that Ettore showed. And we have some LVDT sensors here. And on the inverted pendulum table, we have some geophones, and, and those uh, give an output which is proportional to velocity. Uh, and this is just the cross section of, the, of, of one of the LVDTs and called magnet actuators that, that we have in the inverted pendulum. Basically, the uh, LVDTs, we have a primary coil, and we have a secondary coil, which, is, uh, which actually has two coils. So the uh, secondary coils, they are wanted in, in such a way that when the primary coil is basically at the center, they, they, they give zero output. And we, are ha we also have some coil magnet actuators with some iron yoke, and we have some, some magnets here. Uh, well, LVDT stands for Linear Variable Displacement Transducer, just for the benefit of, of the students. Uh, we also have some horizontal fishing rods, and these ones are basically to set the position of, of, of the inverted pendulum. And uh, this is the inverted pendulum table, and this is held on, on the ground, and we have a stepper motor, and we have some margin steel blades, and the margin steel blades are basically uh, attached onto the inverted pendulum, and on the other end of the, of the steel blade, they go into a carriage, and basically when we move the stepper motor, this carriage basically moves, moving the inverted pendulum. And we have three, three, three of these. And we can adjust the inverted pendulum position within several tens of microns or microradians of the desired position. And we usually then use the cold magnet actuators for, for fine positioning. Uh, we also have some uh, geophones on the table, and they produce an output proportional to the velocity. So the aim of using the geophones is to damp the microseismic peak which in our case is about 200 millihertz. Uh, so the geophones are mixed with the LVDTs uh, in a single sensor, which is called the, the blended sensor. Uh, I think the, the blending frequency that we aim is something lower than 900 millihertz. Uh, and they are basically working in air, and they are hermetically sealed in, in, in that pot. Uh, well, we measure the geophone sensitivity. We use like uh, three geophones, and we estimate the, the correlated noise and the uncorrelated noise. And then the correlated noise is basically the ground motion, and the uncorrelated noise is, 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 is the noise of each one. Uh, so we also have to calibrate them. Uh, basically, uh, these geophones, they, they, they have some uh, an hanging element, which is a, a, a coil, and there is some, some magnet in, inside. So we know what's the transfer function here, and we, uh, we basically compare with the output of a, of, of a sensor which has already been calibrated. And then we know that the transfer function, and, and the, and which is basically at least a square feet in the area, at least in the frequency re regime in which we, we, we have co coherence. Uh, well, just to let you know what the uh, inverted pendulum properties are, I think in longitudinal and transverse, thi this is the, the case of the SR2 inverted pendulum. We have some longitudinal frequency of 55 millihertz, and in Yaw we have 300 millihertz. And uh, well, we also have some modeling tools. So uh, this is the model, and, and the red one is the model, and the blue one is the measurement. Uh, in the model that I'm using here, it is not possible yet to take into account the structural damping. So this is still some work that, that, that has to be done here. And in this case, we have some electromagnetic coupling from the actuator into the LVDT. So these are just some pictures of how the inverted pendulum looks like. In case any of you is interested in this, we can take a, another look later. And this is the, uh, how the geometric anti-spring works. And this is a model of how the, ge the, the, the device works. So these ones are the margin uh, steel blades 
that, that uh, were shown in, in, in previous pictures and in order to un understand how it works, uh, let us think that we have some compression springs, some horizontal compression springs, and this was in, is, is, is a very stiff extension spring. So whenever the, uh, the, the mass is taken out of equilibrium, the compression spring is going to move it away from the, from the equilibrium position. So in this way, we can actually carry a very heavy load, and then uh, these compression springs are going to introduce an, an, an anti-spring effect, and the, and the frequency of the system is, is going to become lower. And this is just the anatomy of, of the gas filters. We have some fishing rods. These ones look very different from the, from the Virgo case. And we also have some small motor in order to adjust the yaw of, 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 of the load. We have three uh, gas filter blades. And we have some coil magnet actuators underneath, which are not seen here. Uh, well, this is just another picture of, 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 of the fishing rod and how it, it looks like. Uh, these actuators. Uh, actually are not used in, 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 in the... The fishing rod is, is to be able to put the load in the right place vertically. So because all these mirrors have a curvature, we, we wanted to have them in the right place. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very soft, yeah. Uh, well. We have LVDTs, well, this basically are the vertical LVDTs, and we have to calibrate them. This one have a relatively large linear range, which is about uh, eight millimeters. Uh, these are just some, some pictures of the mechanics as well. Uh, these are the margin steel blades, the keystone onto which the margin steel blades go onto. And here we, we, we have the coal magnet actuators. Uh, we have a uh, this is a, a plot showing the sensitivity of the LVDTs, and uh, let's say the resolution or the typical integrated RMS are between 0.1 and, and, and 0.5 uh, microns. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, Ettore asked me about the temperature dependence of the of, of the gas filters. For instance, in, in the case of the top filter of the beam splitter, we can have like 1.4 uh, drift millimeters per de degree. But this, this one was actually tuned to a very low frequency, 210 millihertz. And on the other side, we also have another top filter. This one is for SRM. And this one is something about 200 microns uh, millimeters per, uh, sorry, 200 microns per de degree. Well, I still, well, this calculation, I only took into account the change of, of the Young's mod modulus, which is the, the dominant element in, in in, in these de devices, but I still have to compare these with measurements, and I still have to calculate what's the frequency change with temperature as, as, as well. Uh, and then this is the payload. So uh, here we, we have the optic, and the optic is surrounded by the recoil mass, and the aim of the recoil mass is to hold some uh, coils. Uh, and then here, w this is what we call the intermediate mass. The intermediate, recoil, the intermediate mass assembly comprises the intermediate recoil mass that holds some uh, sensors and actuators. And then the intermediate recoil mass is held from the bottom of the top filter by three wires, while the central wire uh, holds the rest of, of, of the payload. This is the payload without the intermediate recoil mass. You can see that the central rod uh, holds the intermediate mass, while uh, these other rods uh, hold the intermediate recoil mass that, that have the, the sensors. Uh, well, the intermediate, the recoil mass is made of titanium, it's about 12, 12 kilograms. The mirror, in, in, in the case of the uh, power recycling mirrors and signal recycling mirrors, is about 10 kilograms. Uh, intermediate mass is basically made of aluminum and stainless steel. And the optic is held by 200 microns piano wire, and the intermediate recoil mass we use tungsten wire, which is 650 microns thick. And then these are just uh, pictures of the optic and the recoil mass. The recoil mass ha has a very small magnet. Uh, I didn't have a 3D drawing for that, so I'm just showing you a picture. And this is just basically the, 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 the coil holder. And this is the optic with, with some polymer first contact. Uh, this is just uh, more pictures. This is the Y-breaker, and this is the, the, the 200 uh, 
200 microns piano wire, and this is the intermediate. This is a recoil mass. Uh, well, it, 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 it goes around the optic. And the intermediate mass works as a marionette. Uh, inside the intermediate mass, we basically have a system with, with, with some heavy mass inside. And on one side, this is held by, by the spring. And then we have some pico motors. So we can uh, move the center of mass of the intermediate mass. Uh, and then we're able to adjust the, the pitch and, 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 and roll of, of, of the system. Uh, this is just how the intermediate, recoil, the intermediate mass looks like inside. And this is just another picture of the assembly. We use this basically to hang the, the optic. It has some winch system and, and some clamps to, for, the, for, the, for the wires. And uh, well, the intermediate recoil mass, the aim of the intermediate rec recoil mass is, is to help some, uh, some sensors and, and, and actuators. And it's just basically an, an, an empty box. Uh, yeah, that's the way the intermediate recoil mass looks like. And the intermediate recoil mass hold uh, some shadow sensors that we call OSEMs. I think we call optical sensor and electromagnetic actuators. So these are basically shadow sensors. This is the intermediate mass that is going to move. And then here we have uh, something that we call the OSEM flag. And this OSEM flag is going to cover the path between an LED and a, and, 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 and a photodiode. And, and this is in, in infrared. So as this, as this one move just creates a, a, a shadow and then we can actually measure how the intermediate mass is, 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 is moving. And we have six OSEMs and we can measure six degrees of freedom. And all of them also have a coil and, and have a magnet. Uh, well, we have some, we, we, we do have to, to calibrate them and we do measure their sensitivity and they have a linear range which is about 900 microns. Uh, this is just a, a very quick graphical tour to the assembly. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of detail. This is just the, uh, the optic while it, it's been hung. Uh, these are the wires. This is the recoil mass. And this is the, uh, the optic, as, as, as the, uh, optic as, as, as assembly. And here, uh, this is used to actually glow, uh, glue the, 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 wi the wire breakers. This is a picture of the top of the button filter. And this is the inner part of the standard filter. Here we just have more pictures, more detail. If, if you're interested, I can, I, I can, I can explain later. So some measurement, simulation, and, and status. So how does the system behave at low frequencies? Enzo will give a presentation about that, so I will not talk about this. So uh, the question is, uh, what does the uh, suspension model predicts within the interferometer observation band. This is uh, still something that we're not, we, we have not measured yet. We are actually going to measure that next week, hopefully. So we have two tools for simulation. One is based on, on Mathematica, and it, it is capable of taking the structural damping, and, but the simulation, the, the control simulation has not been taken into account, and we also have a uh, the control system simulation, which is basically just in MATLAB and, and Simulink, but only viscous damping is, 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 is available. So this is just to remind uh, basically the students that basically our, all of our sensors have some noise, and that noise is basically injected into the system through the feedback uh, loop. And then this is the result of, of, of the sim si simulation, and actually, uh, the status now, it, it doesn't look very good. For instance, uh, we have here the uh, gas filter control, which is basically the, the green line here. And here we have our re 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 requirement. So this is still some work that has to be done in order to reduce that amount of noise. What we basically have to do is to roll off some of the uh, control filters. Uh, and we also have... Uh, the noise of, 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 of the OSEMs is basically uh, too high. So the, uh, the idea is to, uh, to have some uh, transition from, uh, you know, we, we're going to turn off the OSEMs and then deliver the control of the, of, of the payload to the main in, in, in interferometer. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, but then, that, that wouldn't fulfill the requirements at, at low frequency because we still have to damp the resonances of, of, of the system. 
So what, what you're asking is, is this blue curve. So that's, that's a completely passive system, but that one has the resonance of, of, the, of the suspension itself. So we have to have the control system on for the inverted pendulum and, 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 and the gas filter chain so we don't like, excite the, the, the modes in, in, in the payload. So and these calculations assumes 1% coupling between the vertical and horizontal degrees of freedom. Uh, so the immediate future work, I'm talking likely something that we will be doing probably next week, uh, we want to try to take advantage of the common mode rejection that there may be among the suspensions. And we're going to do characterization of the uh, system with the interferometer obs observation band. Uh, so I, I want to, to quickly explain what common mode re rejection I is. So in, in general, the, su the, the suspension are moving in very dissimilar ways. So in principle, to keep the mirrors as still as possible with respect to each other, all the suspensions have to be damped locally. So, but if we have some, if, if they are moving to together, uh, uh, it's going to be easier to have control of the whole interferometer. So the suspensions, are, what, what happens is that in the Kagura underground, the suspension move together to a, sexan, to a certain extent. Uh, the case that I will show is the one in the, in, 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 in the central room. So this is a measurement that Miyokun did. Uh, basically, he measured the common mode, uh, uh, the common differential mode rates, and what he did was to put a seismometer here. This is the input mode cleaner, and he put another seismometer here, and this is a distance of about uh, 20 meters, and uh, this goes in, this is the light that goes into the uh, main interferometer. So in this plot, we can show the common mode, and, and which is the dotted line, and we have the differential mode, which is the one underneath, and, and we can see that at least in this frequency regime that the, the, the common mode is bigger, and this is basically the ratio of the uh, common to, to, to differential mode. And in some cases, it is uh, bigger by a, a, f a, f a factor of 10. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, sensor noise in this measurement might be a problem. That's, that's, that's true. That, that this is still something very preliminary, but, but we do have to, to, to check what, what the sensor noise is, is, is doing. And then, for instance, this is a very simple preliminary model. I think from your lecture, you, you, you taught us that in the uh, microseismic regime, what we have to be careful about are Raleigh waves. So, but in this very preliminary model, it, it is just like a, like, like, like a P wave, but this, uh, this model does not agree with the experiment. So, because this is still a very preliminary model, it could be that uh, because the model is, is, is too primitive, it might not coincide, and we still have to check what's the, what's the, what's the noise of, of, the, of, of, of the seismometers. There is also another plot for the, uh, for the test masses, which are three kilometers apart that I, I, I will not show. And then what we want to do is to, I think now the, the state that we are in, in commissioning is that we're commissioning the small uh, dual recycle Michelson interferometer. And uh, we want to use the re reflections from the input mirrors to, to have an interferometer and, and use it as a, as, a, uh, as a displacement sensor. So the aim is, is to shake the, the inverted pendulum and then measure the transfer function from the geophones into the in interferometer output. Uh, well, this is the end of my presentation, and this is the summary. Well, I just described briefly what the Type B system is. Uh, more work is required to meet uh, the requirement uh, in the ob observation band, and we will characterize the, 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 the system ver very soon. And we want to know if we can use common mode rejection in, in our system. Okay. This is the, uh, the last slide, and I just want to convey the idea that Kagura is, is, is an international collaboration, and we have uh, two Latin Americans. It would be very nice if Latin American people come here and, and develop the, the field here. And this is the last slide.
Uh, this is Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah. I mean, for, for this guy, 